This week in Nerf, we've got confirmation of the newest Strife, an Archer Modular Blaster update, and plenty of other third-party blasters. I'm Jangular, and this is your source for first-party, third-party, and community Nerf news every Saturday morning, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Getting right into it, let's talk about that Strife, the Strife CQ10. Uh, has now shown up on a Dutch website, uh, several Dutch websites actually, for sale. And it has the official images and everything that you see here right above. And it's more expensive than I was hoping, at least overseas. Granted, it may be less expensive here in the States, but it looks like it's retailing on these sites for around 50 euros, which um, I don't know how much the average strife used to sell for, but I don't think it was $50. Someone from the, from the European Union can uh, update me that, update me on that, I hope, so we can get some good information in here. But it is good to know that this is confirmed just further. If you didn't believe that the images we had before of seeing someone with theirs in person was real, this looks like official imagery. So that, in conjunction with it being sold on several websites, I think we're pretty well sold into this being legit now, if you had any qualms about it before. Now what I'm wondering is whether or not ordering one of these will net the blaster actually being shipped and arriving in your hands, or if these listings have gone up early and there's just a pre-order up, so to speak. So that's something to think about here, but I, I am certainly hoping that the cost goes down here in the States. Maybe this is just meant to be the target version of the Battle Camo Strife, since that's only a Walmart exclusive. So they wanted to bring in a new rehash of the Strife with all these accessories and whatnot. As you can see in the image, there are a few on there that are going to bump the price up. So that may be why they've done it, why they've added all the accessories to bump that price up a little bit more and make it similar to the Battle Camo Strife. So if you don't have a Walmart in your area, you can find an updated Strife with those attachments, just not Battle Camo. So regardless, I'm glad to see more Strifes as they are always something we use in the community. Always, always, always. Until they release a better version, we will continue to use them. So let me know your thoughts on this one down below. But let's go ahead and move on to an update from Jet Blasters. Now, when the Archer was announced, there was a bit of skepticism and people not happy about it, or people wondering why, really I think is, is, is a big point, is why is this blaster a thing? It looks like almost, I, it didn't really seem like it had a role. And they released a video discussing the purpose or the function of the Archer and that is it's supposed to be a very modular blaster. They in fact have images of the Magwell using both uh, full-size darts, short darts, and a rival magazine. So they're aiming for a lot of different functionality with this. You, they also showcase a number of different changes to the body, uh, including like a big sniper rifle formation, um, some different changes to the barrels and stuff like that, but also an elongated plunger tube and spring, which was very interesting. Now, how many of these are actually going to come to fruition? I don't know. All of these are just mock-ups. We don't know what they're actually going to run with or what will work when they test it. Uh, so that is at least an insight into their ideas and their ideology behind what this blaster is supposed to be or what role it's supposed to fill. They've uh, also mentioned different priming methods, so maybe you don't have to always top prime it. They did showcase one, I believe, with a bolt prime. So, I don't know. This is one of those things where it is definitely an interesting idea. I'm curious if they can deliver on it because there are a lot of things going into this project that are gonna require a lot of different parts to be made. So I could see it potentially being something that maybe in the beginning doesn't have a whole bunch of offerings to it, but over the course of several years, you get plenty more parts and kits and things that you can do to customize and make that blaster modular and really your own. So like I said, it's interesting. I'm definitely more curious about it than I was when we last talked about it. So 
uh, I'm going to keep my eye on this one. And I'm curious again to hear your thoughts as always. I know a lot of you seem to be against the Archer last time we talked about it. I'm curious if these updates and the video that I will link down below, of course, have changed your mind or maybe made you a little bit more open to the idea than you were prior. Uh, something else to talk about today, I wanted to take some time to talk about third-party blasters. There's a lot of them. A lot of third-party creators making blaster platforms. And I just wanted to take some time to talk about them. Now, we, we've talked about Project FDL and the Caliber and a fair amount on this show. And they're always doing cool stuff. But there are other blasters that I want to talk about and just kind of briefly mention them and that they exist and that they're things to maybe look at. And, and uh, if you haven't taken the time to look at them, maybe you'll find something you didn't know existed. So uh, let's start off with the Chimera. And that is a uh, newer design from Northeast Designs that is similar or started similar to the Caliburn, but in a bullpup configuration and has since changed to adjust certain things like uh, the fact that it can utilize long shot springs with the plunger tube and back. And it's a aesthetically unique and interesting looking blaster. He has recently started shipping uh, DIY kits. So if you have a 3D printer and want to print your own but need the hardware, he started shipping the hardware for those. So that is definitely a plus for those that want to take advantage of that. Uh, another one to talk about is the Spring Thunder, which I love after getting to hold at a game a while back. It is a functional Nerf shotgun with shells that can hold different kinds of rounds in different configurations that you actually physically load into the blaster and you rack and prime it and the, the, the shells shoot out in between shots. It's just, it's wonderful. And I believe he was shipping hardware kits as well, though he may be out currently. Uh, but definitely keep your eye on his Etsy shop for sure, because it's just, they're so much fun. If you haven't seen them, you haven't tried them, do so. Go look it up. Worth your time. Uh, another one to talk about is the Foxfire MBS. The Foxfire MBS is both an open, open source platform that you can print and... Uh, refine and change and alter to your own, but it's a modular blaster system, hence MBS. And it comes with uh, several different designs that they offer on their shop that you can buy if you don't want to print them out on your own. And uh, you can get things like two-stage flywheel front portions that mix in with either a regular size or katana magwell. And you can do a grip system that has either semi-auto or full auto. So it's a whole bunch of things that you can interchange. And I'm very curious to see if the community will pick this up and then alter things and change whatever they want really. Maybe change the aesthetics. So there's different uh, visual versions of this or change different grips. So if you have a different size hand or different you know shape preference, you can do that. All kinds of things. There's a lot of potential with this that I'm very curious about and uh, excited to see over the course of the next few years. And on that point of open source, uh, there are some open source blasters that aren't really available for sale, uh, such as the Rectify and the T19, both flywheel blasters, one brushless, one actually now I believe has options for brushless. The Rectify has several different versions, I believe now, that have been updated and changed around and uh, uh, always iterated on, which is nice. I like that people update and, and keep things going. So... Certainly check those out if you're interested in, in builds that you can do yourself uh, with 3D printers and hardware, uh, electronics components and things like that. Definitely interesting, definitely cool because we get these different visual ideas for the way blasters can look or function or do things. And all of these so far have been either spring or uh, flywheel powered, but we haven't talked about JSPB, which is kind of the go-to third-party air power blaster in terms of 3D printed blasters because he's been doing it for a long time now and I've used several of them and they're a lot of fun to use. They uh, really were one of the first people to take advantage of the SCAR barrel system to start increasing the accuracy of darts and whatnot and I remember the first time we, me and uh, Thundercrunk recorded some of the footage in went frame by frame to see the darts actually spinning and started thinking like, 
is this really helping? Is this stabilizing things? Why is this working? It, it was really interesting. So they're always doing things that are cool and unique, especially the way their blasters look. And they've actually recently delved into spring power blasters with their newest offering, uh, which is kind of cool looking as well. So definitely take a look at these, take a look at all of them. If you haven't heard of any of them, definitely take some time to learn about them. See what's available in this community. There's always more options, always things growing. And that's something I wanted to take some time to talk about today because it is worth sharing with everyone so that people know what really is around in this hobby. That's gonna bring us to our mod of the week. And this week it comes to us from Ritz Cracker. This is the Praetorian. This is a lever action Kronos. And that, I mean, that in its own kind of speaks for itself. That's just an awesome idea. Uh, that was super cool when it was shared. Thank you uh, to the person that shared it because this is just super neat. Uh, like the idea of a lever action blaster, it's always fun, but we've only had it on things like the Slingfire and the Sentinel and the Sentinel, uh, as much as people love it and it, it can be fun to use, it, because it's metal, it can be a little bit uncomfortable at times for prolonged use. The Slingfire one that they've attached is a little bit more comfortable, but it kind of gives something fun to that rival use, I guess. I, I don't know. It, it's like adding something to the rival line that we haven't seen is what makes it interesting and appealing and whatnot. So it's definitely uh, unique. So go take a look at that with the link down below and let them know what you think in the comments. Now for our video of the week, this is one that I could not decide on which way to go until shortly before uh, because we had a few different options for things I could go with. But this week we are going with Newport Nerfer 113 and this is the long game. This is, as the name implies, a long gameplay video. It's a very interesting game form, which is one of the reasons I wanted to share this with you, is it's a big field. They're playing it like a, a paintball or airsoft field. And there's a lot of different objectives. There's a whole bunch of things going on throughout the course of this video. There's flux points, there's bases to be captured, there's uh, items to be picked up that gain you more points, there's timers to be uh, utilized to gain more points. Over the course of an hour and a half to two hour game with a random end time, this is very interesting. And to me, these larger scale, larger format games are something we don't see a lot of and that makes it very very interesting and kind of one of the things that I really enjoy when I watch things like airsoft gameplay videos from their big events is that there's a lot going on a lot that you can focus on and this is somewhat similar also on top of that they've taken two players and mixed up their cams so you can see what's going on from both perspectives as well as a static camera near one of the timers that often sees a decent amount of action so it's cut together well. It gives you a good idea of what's going on as well as map overlays to show where, where they are on the field, uh, objectives and things like that. But also he takes into account that it is a long video. He understands that. So he actually cuts in break points. Uh, I believe there's three or four of them when I was watching that basically said, okay, here's a good place to stop. If you wanna pause, come back another time, do that. Uh, here's the time code for you. So I thought that was a really nice touch. It's something that was interesting and if you're interested in seeing a different kind of style of gameplay video, definitely go check that out. It's gonna be over here in just a minute because we are getting towards the end of the video. And as always, I do need to say thank you so much to the patrons of this channel for helping to grow and support us as we continue to do this show and try to build more and more here. Uh, if you want to know what's going on behind the scenes, kind of what I'm working on, or even uh, influence what I work on, definitely head over to that Patreon. And even if you don't uh, want to support through Patreon or aren't able to, just simple things like commenting, sharing, liking the video, let me know what you think of things is immensely appreciated. I cannot do this without every single one of you. You are always appreciated. And thank you so much for being here to support this show. Uh, with that said, if you have any ideas or thoughts on mods of the week, videos of the week, or news you think I should share, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.